In this video, I'm going to show you how to use ChatGPT for keyword research in a way you've never seen before. I was sleeping last night. I have a problem with a client. We're overcoming this issue and boom, this idea came to me, right? Check this out. It's pretty cool. So the first step is to merely ask ChatGPT, are you familiar with Bofu, Mofu and Tofu? That is the journey of a client to purchasing your service or product. Right, so ChatGPT said, yeah, I'm familiar with it. Tofu is top of funnel. It refers to the initial stage of a customer's journey. Mofu is middle. It, uh, users have been moved beyond the initial awareness and are actively considering their options. And Bofu uh, represents the final stage of a customer's journey where users are close to making a purchase decision. So what was my problem? I told you I had a problem with a client. And the problem was this, although we doubled our client's traffic in about three months time, okay, it's a big, big deal. Most of the traffic coming in is top of funnel stuff. People are just kind of tire kickers. You know that term tire kickers, right? We need to get them closer down the funnel. We need to find people that are ready to purchase. So how do we do that? So the next thing I asked is that here's a question. Are chainsaw mills worth it? All right. So that is our seed question. Are chainsaw mills worth it? Now I need you to provide a list of questions that are more tofu when compared to this question. We need a list of questions that people most likely asked prior to this question to then ask this question. Why is that? Because we are going to kind of crystallize. You've seen my other videos, crystallization of keywords. I want to know the buying process based upon this keyword, right? So what did it do? It said, what are the different types of chainsaws available? How do chainsaw mills work? And it gave us a really good, good, good list. So how did I get this question here? So I have a video right here. Check it out after this one. It's based upon free tools versus paid tools. You'd be surprised at how well uh, Ask Socrates does in providing seed questions for keyword research. So the next step, just to test this thing, I said, here's a question, and I just asked it Bofu, right? Instead of doing Tofu up here, give me Bofu, closer to bottom of the funnel, people who are ready to make a purchase. And it gave me a list of questions that are really, really well. What specific features should I look for in a chainsaw mill, right? That is a question someone's going to ask when they're ready to make a purchase. Now, why does this matter for a blog like yours, like a niche website? Because if you can understand this, you are going to be able to do topical authority content hubs, right? This is everything. If you look at Matt Diggity's recent video, he kind of scales different SEO tactics and what matters the most. And topical authority, I tend to agree with his list, topical authority is up there big time. So the next thing I did is said, can you create a new gradient metric called funnel placement? That sounds fancy and cool, funnel placement. Create this new metric, what does it do? Which is a range of one to 10. The closer a question is to tofu, the closer it is to 10. The closer a question is to bofu, the closer it is one point. So I said, please arrange these questions into a list in rank and sorted funnel placement score. So I gave it, I forced ChatGPT 20 questions that we came up with earlier, right? And now I want you to rank them, ChatGPT. Why are we gonna do this? Well, we're gonna get into that, but let's keep going. So here it is, here's the output. Boom, every single question, it says, to assign the funnel placement scores uh, to the questions given, we'll consider their relevance to the sales funnel stages. Great, love it, let's do it. So what specific feature should I look for in a chainsaw mill? They're saying this is Bofu, bottom of funnel 2.5, and they go on and on. This is so powerful. The next thing I wanted to do, I asked it, explain why you scored it this way. I just wanna double check. So it said this question, so it says, what specific feature should I look for in a chainsaw mill? It says this question indicates that the person is already considering purchase in a chainsaw mill and is looking for specific features. It aligns more with Bofu, where individuals are close to making a decision, have specific product related inquiries. That's a perfect explanation. I actually trust ChatGPT for this query. And before we go on, I wanna be clear. I think ChatGPT stinks at doing regular keyword research. If you're gonna ask it for search volumes and like these type of things, it stinks. It's pulling fictitious data, but for conceptualization, ideation of, of what we're going to write about, because that's where a lot of value lies in SEO, ChatGP is really good. And I think this new method is gonna help us and here's how. Every circle here denotes an article. This is what a website should look like. We have top of funnel stuff, we have middle, and then we have Bofu down here. Why is there more Bofu? So can somebody tell me why is there more Bofu? Why is there way more articles? Look here, why is there way more articles at the bottom of this illustration? Like, like way more. The reason is, have you ever heard of the avalanche technique? 
right? Kyle Roof talks about it. Other people talk about it. Uh, nonetheless, the reason there's way more at the bottom is because when you start a website, Bofu stuff is easier to rank for because the keyword difficulty is much less because there's less people asking these questions. But the cool part is they often have the intention of actually learning the stuff. And when you're selling a product or a service or you want to have affiliate links, this matters because you can make more money with these type of things down here. Now, if you have a display ad, um, you know, niche website, all of these work. You're going to get, and you should, you can have both. You can have display ads and affiliate. But the point is, BOFU, bottom of funnel stuff, identifying those type of questions, those queries allows us to write more of those. And if you're just relying on Ahrefs and tools to give you these questions, you have a disadvantage to people like me who, you know, we sit around with SEOs, other people on my team, and we think about these things. We think about questions no one is asking, and we answer them in a way that no one else is answering them. That matters a lot. And for the last step I asked to take all 20 of them and sort them by funnel placement scores. And it said, okay, no problem. So it took them, score 2.5 BOFU all the way down to 4.5 MOFU, all right? And it even has a gradient score, right? 4.0. So it sorted them. Very interesting. There's no top of funnel questions here. So it means the purchase, the per, the, excuse me, the person is already in like the purchasing ideation phase. So the bottom of funnel one, the most bottom of funnel one, what would we do with this? Are there any alternatives to chainsaw mills for mill and lumber? That's a really interesting question. Are there any alternatives? What could you do with this question? So in practice, you sit here and you think about what can I do with this specific question What says alternatives to chainsaw mills for mill and lumber? Well, that is a content hub in itself. As someone has progressed down the funnel and they've gotten this far, they've thought about purchasing a chainsaw mill. Now they're thinking about alternatives. They're still middle bottom of funnel. Now you know you can branch off to a semantically related content hub. If you like this content, Check out the masterclass. Please subscribe to this video, like it, share with a friend, all these things. We have Word Galaxy coming around the corner. This thing is looking awesome. I'm very, very proud of it. If you want to be one of the first people in line to use the official version, uh, click the link in the description. I'll have a, a Google form where you can fill out something. We're only letting a few people in at a time. The masterclass members will have lifetime access to the Word Galaxy suite. So I hope you like this video and I'll catch you on the next one.